fucking desk. There must be some unswitched outfits on here or something because, uh, yeah. Hello, hello. Oh, it's already live. Great. it would do that. Really blown out. Hello, and good afternoon. Today, I was going to build, as I promised, uh, not promised, but mentioned on last stream, Saturday. Um, I was going to build this. The Alu Bendy. Uh, the awesome thing about this board is, I mean, it just looks like your standard, you know, 34 key, split, splayed, whatever. Um, but the PCB is actually made out of aluminum instead of FR4, so it's flexible. 
which means you can bend it. So the idea was that you bend it and kind of sculpt your your keys like that. The problem is that with this particular board, I don't know if this is resolvable or whatever, but these PCBs don't work. And the problem is that it appears to me that because of 17 keys on each half, you all you can direct wire everything. And the way you direct wire is you, because um, there's enough controller pins for each switch. Um, so the way you direct wire there is you connect ground to the other half of the pin or the other half of the switch. So that way, when you push the switch down, it pulls the, um, it pulls that pin to low and that activates the switch that activates on the, in the firmware. Um, and so the way this appears to have been attempting to get ground to all of the switches without having to do multiple layers on the one side, cause this is only a one sided PCB. Cause normally what you would do on like a matrix PCB and I'll show you the Absalom is you have all the rows on one side and all the columns on the other side. And that way, um, and you use a via to pull the columns to the other side or the rows to the other side. Um, but since you can't do that on here, <coughs> you can't, um, because there's no other side, uh, you can't have any overlapping traces because they would just connect, right? Unless you have multiple layers, which is more complicated and costly and stuff like that. And not really necessary if you can use, say, the PCB itself as a ground. However, the way it looks like it was trying to do that is it uses a via connected to each switch and connected to the ground pin on the controller to make this a ground plane. Except that doesn't seem to work. Because I tried connecting... You know, I tried putting, a, you know, doing a connectivity test or a, a continuity test between the ground pin from the controller and the ground pin on the switch and got nothing. So I think the idea is valid. I think um, there might be, might be you need to tell the manufacturer to do it right. I don't know how you would do that. Um, but these... PCBs don't work. So sadly, not going to be building this today. However, finally, I'm joining the club. <laughs> hey, um, I, uh, I've been a member of the Absalom club discord server for a while. In fact, uh, last month I flew to DC to meet up with a bunch of other Absalom Club nerds. I got a pile of PCBs, including the two I just put in the trash. I got this awesome Absalom Club thing, which was going to be my fallback for today. Um, but S'mores, who's been threatening to send me an Absalom PCB for a long time, uh, was like, dude, check your mail. <laughs> and I checked my mail, and sure enough, there's an Absalom PCB in my mailbox. So, today we're joining the club. I'm gonna finally get that yellow username in the Absalom club server. And uh, yeah, have an Absalom. So, Absalom is um, made by Mr. Zealot. Um, he's got a whole blog post on his process for building this and stuff. And uh, he's also the, the person who, um, uh, originally created the ErgoGen keyboard generator tool, uh, which has, you know, like you've seen me use it with the, um, with the, not with the Abomination. The Abomination wasn't done with ErgoGen, but, uh, the Aduxification or the, the Unification, Unibody Adux modded thing that I built, um, that I want to continue on and actually get to a PCB, even though I'm probably not going to use it long term, uh, just because I, I have 
I think I like the Revyung better, and I'm just gonna mod that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, but he kind of started Ergogen to make this board. I think is how the story goes. Uh, he's got a whole blog post on it, but um, if you're on the Absalom Club server and you own an Absalom that you built, uh, you you get an owner tag, and then your name turns yellow. So I'm building this so I can get a username on Discord. It's awesome. I'm I'm pretty excited about this. Just you know, it's a fun board. Uh, it's thirty. Six keys, looks like, so it's got a couple of useless thumb keys, that's fine. Um, it's got a little bit of column splay on just the pinky, it looks like. Uh, it supports MX, chalk, and looks like some other type of switches, because there's extra pins that I don't know. Um, yeah, otherwise it's just your standard 36 key unibody, pro micro, whatever. Um, today, the way... Oh, oh! Oh, one cool thing it has, and this is something I really hope more keyboards have, is power switch on the bottom for a little surface mount power switch. And there's a JST connector pad here. At least I'm assuming that's what that is. Um, so that you can connect a battery here with a JST connector. Um, so you can easily make this into a wireless keyboard with a nice nano um, or whatever other... I think he uses a BLE micro or something like that. But um, yeah, it's it's really nice to have that capability because you can turn the keyboard off when you stick it in your backpack or something like that. Uh, or when you're just putting it away so it's not constantly draining it. Um, it also has a pad here for an LED, which, because I'm going to use a uh, an Elite C today for the controller, so I'm not so worried about power, um, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put the LED on here. It looks like it actually supports multiple different types of LEDs, probably the SK6812 Mini and the WS2812, 2812, is that what they are? This, this, <laughs> these. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what the LED is for other than just, hey, there's an LED. Uh, it's a little odd that it's, like, not behind anything or it's just bright-ass LED right in your face. Uh, but that's okay. It'll be fine. I think, uh, it's gonna be a fun build. Um, I love the silks on this. I hadn't seen those before, so there's, like, a line around here. I don't know if you can read it. Let's see if I can... Yeah, the auto... The fixed focus is going to mess with that. Uh, but on the these lines here, there are little labels that say this is strictly a row stagger free zone. Uh, that's kind of one of the, the guiding principles of the Absalom Club server is that it's... Uh, there's blasphemy and one of those things is... Um, one of the rules is one distance from home max. So you can't have any switches that are more than one distance from a home position and uh, no row stagger. Uh, everything else is pretty much fair game. I think there's another rule too, but those are the two big ones. Um, QMK version of the Absalom if you want that. Uh, like QMK the firmware? Is that not like in QMK main or whatever? I was just going to grab a stock firmware off of um, the QMK uh, configurator just to have something to put on here. Uh, but if it's not in there, then yes, I will take any firmware you have that I can put on this. Um, I'm using an Elite C, so um, if that makes a difference. So yeah, let's see. Uh, there's no build guide for this, because there really doesn't need to be. Um, because, you know, it's solder switches, solder diodes, solder your controller. Pretty straightforward. Um, I've been told that some of the diodes are in a different orientation, so I'm going to screw that up at least once. Um, yeah, because, like, these are facing that way and these are facing that way that's gonna be fun okay 
Uh, let's see what else. Uh, the switches aren't particularly tight in the thing, and I'm going to use Glorious or Holy Pandas because those are the first reasonable switches I pulled out of my box of switches. Um, but no, I'm not because these are these are plate mount. Okay, I need to find different switches. <laughs> So I have W4s, but not enough of them. <laughs> Am I going to box jade them? No, because they're plate mount as well. Okay. These are Aqua Xylents, or maybe just Xylent V2s. Xylent V2s. They are PCB mounts. So I will use those. I have some other switches here that I was thinking about using, um, but since these are really meant for RGB, and this isn't a hot swap board, I didn't want to solder them in and have them permanently on here when they really should go into something with RGB. If it was hot swap, I would put them in there because I can always take them out later easily. But I don't want to. I don't want to solder them permanently. Okay, not in main. Cool. Well, if you've got a firmware, as long as it has every key mapped to something so that I can test it, then it's fine. Um. Okay, so this actually does fit pretty well. So I, I don't remember what switch I used earlier, but I tested this out a little bit by putting a switch in the PCB and it was really loose. Which when you're not using a plate is a pain because you put the switches in, you flip the board over and all the switches fall out. But these seem to fit pretty decently, so cool. So, as usual, we'll get started by soldering the diodes. And... Do I want to put the diodes on the bottom or on the top? I think they need to go on the bottom because otherwise switches the capsule. Okay, yeah. So, okay. Put it on the bottom. At least I'm 90% certain this is the bottom. Yeah, because the switch doesn't go in there. Put a little piece of tape on here and right top on it just so I know. Okay. <sighs> Got the iron fired up. It needs to be off a little bit got the heat turned off so I can use the fan as as Jerry was harassing me about it the other day I uh, I chose to freeze versus breathe in cancer fumes or something like that and I told him like well this the heater I have down here one the walls in this room are concrete for the most part and it's underground, so like once it heats up, it's gonna hold on to its heat pretty well. And two, it's an oil-based uh, space heater, so it holds a lot of heat itself. So it's still radiating quite a bit of heat into the room. So it'll slowly get cold, but it's not gonna get super cold. Certainly not in the time 
um, that it takes to solder this. Plus, I've got a hot soldering iron and stuff. I'll be fine. All right, so we've got, we need diodes. So speaking of components, uh, I just put in an order for a bunch of components. Um, Cause I've got, I've got some other boards that I wanted to build and one of them was or one of them is the, what is it called? I don't even remember what it's called, um, but it's a, uh, it's a, a, a nifty board in that it has like 3D-ish things. So it's got some like FR4 stuff that you put into the board and then put a switch like another like a riser thing on it um so you can have kind of a sculpted board it's really cool but i was told that you need special hardware for some of it like some special ribbon cable connector thing um but i didn't realize that you only need that if you're doing the joysticks that it has support for in the pcb in the sense that the cable, the place to put the connector is there, but otherwise you're like just double sticky taping the thing to it. Um, so I'm like, so I can just leave that off and it's totally functional as a keyboard. So I didn't need to buy those special components. Um, but I did get stuff for NRF micros, but it's going to be like two months before that gets here because AliExpress. Um, I also got, um, well, I was also going to order stuff for the two or 0.2% milk from, from Gary. Uh, but he says he's going to send me, he's got a kit, so he's going to send me that stuff. So that's cool. Uh, and then I was going to buy stuff for the torn and I actually placed the order. And, uh, it turns out that the controllers, the, um, socket mount, um, whatever those controllers are, are uh, on back order till July. And nobody has them. I've checked a bunch of different places and nobody has them. So uh, sadly, I'm probably not ever going to build that Torn because I don't have the controller for it. Like there were some other random parts like resistors of certain values that were on back order but i'm like i can get those from alley or something like that um or i might even have them because i've got a box i bought a like a sampler pack of resistors or something like that from amazon a while back um but yeah the controller just doesn't doesn't exist you can't get it scaffold that's it yes it seems like an awesome concept and I really want to check it out. Um, and that'll be coming up soon. Maybe tomorrow. I doubt it, but we'll see. Depends on uh, what I feel like doing. Um, Cause it's probably going to take me more than a day or more than one stream. So tomorrow would actually be good because I can, it probably won't take me more than two. Because otherwise, it's just a fairly straightforward build. Wow, these are tiny pads. So I might start it tomorrow, finish it on Sunday kind of thing. But we'll see. I mean, today I was going to build that uh, Alu Bendy. And found out that I couldn't because the PCBs don't work. Yeah, I have a I have a Fisher. I built that on stream a couple months ago. Uh, very cool. It's a different. It's a very different way. So with the Fisher, the Fisher is like a flat alpha and a flat thumb 
and it's connected by a little piece of FR4 that sits vertically. Or at whatever angle you want to do it at. And uh, so it, it, it has kind of built-in tenting using the thumbs. So the thumbs are flat against the table and the alphas are raised up. It's really cool. Uh, where this, the... What is it again? The scaffold. Uh, each individual key that's not on the home row is tented or is sculpted upward. Uh, so there's like... You can build it as a flat and I think there's, uh, someone posted a picture, like, you know, uh, Chuby themselves posted a picture recently of them doing it, um, with, um, sorry, hard to talk and solder at the same time, because two different parts of the brain. Um, they posted a picture of it built flat just to see, um, but it can also be built so that each, each key that, you know, the top row is tilted toward you and the bottom row is tilted away from you. So it's kind of a sculpted, like a little scoop. Um, it looks really cool and I'm definitely, I'm not going to build a flat. I've built enough flat keyboards that it, it's not novel enough on its own as a flat keyboard for me to build it. Um, like it doesn't have any sentimental value for me and, or that, but it's like with it, with the, uh, sculpted stuff, it does. So how do I afford these keyboards? Um, well, a lot of the stuff I've built lately, the PCBs have been free, um, because people... Uh, the Absalom Club server, especially, I think, has a strong culture of, hey, I'm putting in an order who wants one. Because, say, from JLC, you can really only buy PCB's minimum order of five. So it's like, I buy a keyboard, you know, I buy a PCB, and that's like $30 for five of them, right, shipped. So it's like, hey, I'm, I'm you know, getting some PCB's made up. Who wants some? Uh, like Shagat is the source of the giant pile of PCBs next to me, including the two I just put in the trash. Um, and a couple of other things. He's got stacks of PCBs laying around just because he's like, oh, hey, this looks like a cool board. I'm going to get the PCBs made up for it. And then he's just got extras. So he just gives them to people. And that's like on that server, especially is a very, there's a strong culture of that. Um, the Osprey that I built last week was, I was part of a group buy. Um, so I did pay for that. I, um, but how do I afford it? So a lot, like I said, a lot of PCBs are free. The switches are not free. Of course, the components like these diodes, this is like $5 with the diodes. And I've built a ton of boards with them. So diodes, most of the components are cheap. Uh, I get Pro Micros for five bucks a piece on Amazon. Um, uh, switches and caps are the biggest expense that I have probably. And as far as like, how do I afford those? I used to make a lot of money. So I have a lot of disposable income. And so this is a hobby for me to build keyboards. And so I spend money on it. Um, I could, especially if these are hot swap boards, um, very easily just build the board, put some switches and caps in, take pictures and pull all that stuff off and reuse them in other builds. For the most part, once I build a board, it's got switches and caps in it. It stays that way. Uh, just because I have so many of them. Um, i probably start to do less of that because... Um, I'm kind of... I'm running out of time. So I'm leaving for the Appalachian Trail in, like, April. Uh, but probably 
uh, more realistically, I'll be leaving my home in March because I'm gonna I plan to road trip my way to the start of the Appalachian Trail. So, you know, give myself a month to do that. So I'm kind of running out of time. I don't want to buy a bunch of stuff and have it like not get delivered by the time I leave. And I didn't realize this was in the frame. Um, so uh, there might be some reuse or there might be just some like, hey, I built this and uh, you know, there's no switches or caps in it, but I don't know. More than likely, um, what will happen going forward is uh, I'll be doing more on the computer with like firmware stuff, especially because um, I do really still want to um, get support into ZMK for the Cirque trackpads and then build a keyboard with that. So at some point I'll be trying to modify the Revyung 34 to have some of the stuff that I want out of it. Um, and maybe trying to put the Cirque touchpad in there too. So that was a very long-winded answer to your question. The the TLDR is pretty much that I used to make a lot of money and now I just build keyboards. Um, but also, this isn't as expensive as it might look, especially if you reuse caps and switches. I'm not a new club member yet. I haven't built it, or I haven't actually typed on it yet, so... You know, it doesn't work yet. Okay, see, this is one of those ones where it's backwards, so it's like, these are both that way and this is the opposite. Frustrating. So another thing I could do to make this more affordable of a hobby is sell the boards that I build. Um, which, I mean, I do commissions, so I sell them that way. But most of the boards that I built on stream are I are still here. Like I don't sell, you know, I'm not selling this Absalom um, or the Zaphod or the, you know, million other keyboards I have here. Um, I have built commission boards on stream before. Um, so it's not like they're exclusive to off stream. In fact, uh, next week I will be building some Zaphods. I think I have five or six of them to build. One of them is mine. But the others are for... Either... Uh, the others are for Pete's build service. Which was me building them. <laughs> But those are those are pretty easy, at least in terms of the soldering, because it's just it's literally just solder the switches and the pogo pins for the display. And then the rest is building the case, which is arguably harder. But I don't, I don't make any money off of my stream, uh, not for any kind of uh, ethical reasons or anything. I just don't have enough uh, subscribers on YouTube 
to monetize the channel. So go hit that subscribe button and the like button. Um, but also it's not really, you know, my goal is not to like make a million dollars building keyboards on stream. It'd be kind of fun. But really I'm just here to kind of share the uh, experience share the joy that I get out of doing this hang out with some cool people yeah this yellow is really nice it's the same yellow as the clog which is um s'mores split version of his Ospreit. Uh, this is just like one half of one. Um, it's just this is, this has a ground plane fill or just a fill. I don't know if it's actually functional or is wired to anything. Um, and this, because you can see that these traces are the same color as this. So this is just like big fat traces, basically. Um, but it's the same, you know, same manufacturer, same yellow. I like it. Oh, uh, okay. So Dennis, or Dennis Bond, that's, uh, appears to be Mr. Zealot. Okay. I was like, who is that? <laughs> I do wish YouTube made it easier to not, like, leak your name to chat. Like, if you didn't want your name to be known, sorry. Um, but YouTube, I think, has more of a, like... I don't know, it's also weird, because... When someone subscribes to my channel, it's not a person subscribing to my channel. It's a channel subscribing to my channel. It, YouTube is weird. And it's because I can literally, like, I can have multiple channels. You know, maybe at some point I'll have a channel for my backpacking stuff, right? But I can have multiple channels... And they each kind of have their own brand identity, I guess. And so it, it makes sense from that. But it's just weird when it's like, I don't think about y'all as channels. You know, if I get a subscription notification, I think of that as a person subscribing to my channel, not a channel subscribing to my channel. I don't know. It's just weird. Someone in their marketing department is probably like, no, no, it's got to be a channel because otherwise the, you know, the blah, 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 blah. But anyways, as far as the um, diode direction thing, uh, it's fine. Like you said, it makes sense with the wiring. It's fine. Um, it's just one of those things that like, means I have to pay more attention to it and I am notorious for getting into autopilot and just rolling and then being like oh well all those are backward especially with LEDs at least diodes are easy to fix I'm honestly just happy to finally have one of these things. Danash Bon. Okay. See, I was trying to... Because um, in Spanish, if there's an accent on a letter, you put the accent on that syllable versus the um, the normal syllable it would go on because their Spanish has pretty well-defined pronunciation rules. 
So I was trying to pronounce it Spanish, kind of. Danash, Danash. <laughs> oh, C, 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 C. Okay, look. I got an autopilot mode. I was paying attention to chat and not to thing, and these diodes here are backward. See? So not only are you messing with me with the PCB, but you're messing with me in chat. You just want to make my life hard. I see how it is. You've got a name that I can't pronounce. I'm just, I'm just teasing. And also, hello, Keen. Thank you for for joining. Glad to have you here. <laughs> That's a pretty long con you've got going on there. And oddly specifically targeted. Speaking of specifically targeted, so I don't know if y'all have seen the uh, stuff about this, this zero click iPhone uh, exploit that's been going around or not going around, but like that's been used that there's some news going around about it. But the crazy thing about it is that using just specifically crafted images, they built an entire computing environment inside a PDF that automatically started executing when you sent it to somebody and it turns out they did this to target an a one activist in saudi arabia now um there's a subreddit called fuck you in particular and the idea with that subreddit is that it's like say there's a line of people standing somewhere and one of them gets picked off by a cat or something like that like it's just like I could have done this to anybody, but you in particular. Now, the amount of engineering work and, and thought and everything that went into building an entire computing environment that runs out of a PDF and exploit in a, like, an open source version of a PDF process. I mean, it's just like how far removed from actual, um, you know, normal usage of this functionality <laughs> they went to make this just to get one person and I'm like if that doesn't scream fuck you in particular wow like that's that's amazing and I'm sure a lot of it's reusable but at the same time so much of it is very specific just to that that graphics engine they're they're exploiting it's just mind blowing the links
like part of me so uh, a, a former co-worker of mine um used to be or he probably still is but he was a a regular on the something awful forums and the something awful forums if you're not familiar with them they have um they are like the originators of micropayments <laughs> Because on the Something Awful forums, if you get banned, you can pay five or ten bucks to unban yourself. Like, literally, just if you're banned for any reason, just about. You know, obviously, they probably have certain exclusions to that rule. Um, but if you got banned for, you know, whatever, you can pay ten bucks and unban yourself. You can change your username. You can change your display name. You can change the little text that's under your name. So, like, if I was on kitchen, it might say like keyboard person or something like that. But one thing you can do is you can pay f to change someone else's name or someone else's like title text. And what happens is there's a lot of like retaliatory, like I'm going to pay $5 to, you know, change someone else's title text. And it's going to say like, I'm a total dick blah 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 in all caps and giant font and red and stuff like that so someone did that to him one day that on, on that line of like you know calling him out for being a jerk or something like that and he's like that's my proudest achievement in life i made some i pissed someone off so bad they spent f money of their own to to like <laughs> to change my username or to change my my profile thing on the something awful forums he's like he wears that that title like a badge of honor because he can pay five bucks and change it back and that's what kind of the idea is is that it's like you you can pay five dollars or ten bucks or however much it is to like change someone's name and that forces them to you know, pay money to get a bat or to get rid of it. Um, but he's like, nah, 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 I'm not getting rid of that. So I'm proud of that. Yeah, I'm talking about the NSO zero click message, iMessage exploit. It's fascinating. Like, everything about it is fascinating, and then what's so much more fascinating is they did it to attack one person. Like, that's just... Come on, man. You really gotta piss somebody off for for an entire government organization to, like... Yeah. Like, that's... That's... Yeah. And I don't know what the activist was, or, you know, what their role was i'm not trying to get into the politics behind it just the thinking about the technical aspects of um you know the fact that they did that like that's just mind-blowing I will say this fan I use sucks at sucking. Uh, the airflow just isn't as good as I would prefer. But it sucks good enough for the most part. And it's way quieter than the one I had in here. So if I was doing this a lot more on a bigger scale, I wouldn't worry about it or if I wasn't trying to stream it because I don't really hear it 
because I've got noise canceling headphones on. But it definitely gets picked up on the mic. Well, they built it into a PDF, but then built that PDF into a GIF or something like that. Like, it's just so... Like, they got down and dirty with the guts of that that image processing subsystem to figure out how to make that work, and it's just mind-blowing. Whoops. But it is also kind of one of those, like, I don't respect the why you did it, but I do absolutely respect the how. Kind of like I respect that Facebook has amazing, amazing technical engineering challenges. That would be amazingly fun and, and cool to work on and stuff like that, but I will never work for Facebook or Meta or whatever the hell they're calling themselves nowadays. like yeah that's really cool what you're doing with your revision control systems because you've got scaling issues you know how do you get 10,000 engineers to work in the same repo and not have it be chaos uh, but it's you know you work at Facebook so <laughs> gonna do a quick run through look at the solder joints but also look at the diode orientation all right I think that's good enough for now goes upside down. Raw ground reset VCC. Okay. All right. Who's got that firmware for me? So I'm getting ready to solder this. Headers. Oh wait, what am I doing? I figured this out once. That if I put the controller on here, it keeps them square, and then I also know I can get the controller on and off. These are definitely not the prettiest solder joints on these diodes, but I don't care. LinkedIn Discord. Okay.
I didn't. I so uh, sorry. I just got distracted looking through Discord. Uh, Mr. Zealot was like, went to grant you a shiny new yellow color and noticed you weren't even an Ergo General yet, even after completing that unibody so far ago now. I thought Ergo General was like contributor to Ergo Gen, not has used Ergo Gen, or I would have been like, where the shit is my, my thing? Um, but I am now an Ergo General and an owner, even though I'm not quite done yet. So now I've got pressure to do this and have it work instead of just being like, well, that's going in the trash. Whoops. <laughs> oh, I see. So Ron, you, oh, okay. That's got the, the hex too. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Raw. Save as. Downloads, Absolute Runs Echo, Hex. That's good enough. Well, I'm going to have to rename it, I think. All right, let's go back to stream. So the way I flash um, QMK controllers is uh, I use a tool called QMK Toolbox, which figures out what bootloader and all that stuff, because I don't know any of that stuff. Whatever. Um, so I, I either compile the firmware locally, or in this case, I'm grabbing it from um, from uh, you know somebody else, or you know, in the case of a ZMK board, I'm lazy and I use GitHub Actions to build it for me. Um, so I grab it that way, um, and then I just load it using those normal methods. I don't know if that answers your question, <laughs> but, uh, that's how I program the controllers. And in this case, uh, well, and in any case, really, I tend to try to at least flash the controller before I solder it onto the board. Um, because the controller, getting the controller off of the board once it's been soldered, and I don't tend to use socketed controllers very often, um, getting the controller off the board after it's been soldered on is a huge pain to the point where unless it was a board I really, really, really wanted to use, I probably wouldn't bother. Um, and I figure if I can flash it, then, so like, what I do is I, I, you know, take the controller off. I flash a firmware to it without it being connected to a keyboard. I don't bother testing anything else after that. Cause I'm like, you know, I figure if it works at that point, uh, it's probably going to work forever. And if it doesn't work, I throw it away and grab another one. Uh, unless it's like an elite C or a nice nano, which are expensive. Uh, but a pro micro five bucks for a P you know, I just throw it out and I'm just like, I'm not going to bother trying to get it R made or anything like that. Um, I haven't had any fail on me yet. Uh, I thought I had one fail or a couple of times. I thought I had one fail one. I just needed to flash the EEPROM, um, because I had reused it from another board and it had RGB and whatever. Um, and I thought I had another one fail. I don't remember what the problem was. Oh, no, it was like uh, my magnetic USB connectors I use were causing it to act funny or something like that. So I just used a straight cable 
and it worked fine. So I'm like, okay. Uh, that was on one of the Kyria builds I did for Thomas. I am in uh, Portland, Oregon, so on the west coast of the U.S. Let's see. Got a USB C cable plugged into my computer somewhere around here. I thought. That's plugged into power. So many cables all over my desk because I need to. This is the power cable that's plugged in. But... All right, well, I'm gonna try good old magnetic connector which I've had failed with this specific Elite C before. So we'll see if it still fails. What soldering iron do I use? I use a Weller WESD-51. But for keyboard work, that is massive overkill. Don't need that for a keyboard. Not saying don't get one. Okay. So power's on. It's in flash mode. Okay. So it looks like it worked. Yeah, I don't have any kind of um, gas powered soldering irons or anything like that. I do also have a pine sill, um, which if you're, if you just want to do keyboard work, I'm sure it's great for a bunch of other stuff, but if you just want to do keyboard work, it is more than adequate. Um, it's basically a TS-100 clone, um, has interchangeable tips that the tips are compatible with the TS-100 as far as I know. Um, it's great. I just, I really, I like the, I like this better. <laughs> the heating and everything, I, it doesn't matter. Like the, the, how this feels in my hand, this feels better. So I use this instead. And also I paid a lot of money for this. I'm going to use it. Where in PDX are you, unregistered, if you don't mind me asking? I am at uh, 30th and Hawthorne. And are you part of the PDX keyboard club? Because if you're not, I will send you the link to that Discord.
Uh, I will mention one of the main reasons I'm using an Elite C for this is because I have one. <laughs> Uh, and the other main reason is because I think it'll this board would look better with a black controller than a blue one. And all my Pro Micros are blue. Otherwise, I would just be using a Pro Micro. Because Elite C's are way too expensive to use for... Really, for anything. I mean... I get it. You know... Um, they've got a, a USB-C connector, so that makes them better than the Pro Micros or something like that. These little magnetic tips take away most of the problems you have with Pro Micros. And for the most part, uh, on any keyboard that I plan to use, like as a daily driver for any period of time at this point, I'm building with nice nanos, um, because I want wireless. So... I just use Pro Micros because they're cheap and plenty are readily available. Cheap and plentiful, that's what I was looking for. The difference between an Elite C and a Pro Micro is that Elite C has a USB C port. They are functionally identical otherwise. Same footprint, same controller, or, you know, same microcontroller, same specs, same everything. The main difference between them is that the Elite C has a USB-C port. That's it. And it's black, I guess, and castellated edges. Near Halsey, okay. Cool. Up on I-84 near, the, or up north of I-84 near the golf course. Sorry, I just saw your message again about the LEDs testing them. Um, basically, I don't know how to test them before they go on the board. You probably just need some sort of little jig or something, but you need to drive them too. Um, or at least like, you're not really driving them in the sense of like a transistor drives a speaker or a, a component, but you're driving them in terms of you're telling, giving them a signal for like to light up because otherwise they just don't light up. If you just put, if you just take, and I don't have the ability to do this, but if you just take VCC and ground and put it on a, on a LED, it's not going to light up on an RGB. Uh, you have to supply it with a with instructions, basically. Um, once it's on the board, you trace the chain. So an LED, at least on most keyboards, uh, and anything using these WS2812s or SK6812s, um, there's a little onboard controller here that takes a... some sort of serial signal on a data in chops off the first bit or first byte or something and says, okay, this is my instruction and then sends the rest along down the chain. So the LEDs are all just one big chain uh, wired up as one big chain. So uh, if you plug in a keyboard that you've just built and none of the LEDs work, it's not you screwed up all the LEDs. You might have, but it's not necessarily you screwed up all of the LEDs. You might have just screwed up the first one. So you figure out which order the LEDs are in on the board and just go through and fix them one by one until you get them all lit up. And if in doubt, swap the key, swap the LED out and put a new one in. These are cheap. Uh, most of the time, if you buy a kit with them, uh, uh, they'll come with several extras. Um, with these, you don't have to worry so much about heat um, because of the way you're touching the board or the the led and stuff with the sk6812 non-e minis you have to worry a lot about heat because the pad is right on the back it's just i hate those leds don't use them 
basically is what I would say. Um, of course, that's up to the keyboard designer whether you use them or not. But if you're if you're designing a board yourself, don't use those LEDs. Use the one with the legs. They're so much easier. Okay. See you, Lorenzo. Thanks for stopping by. And thanks for the uh, the uh, firmware. So with the LEDs, you've got four pads. You've got uh, BCC and ground and data in and data out. And so the VCC and ground, those can just be wired up to VCC and ground. They don't need to be a chain. They can be however. The data in, data out, you put data into one coming off of the controller. Data out to the next LEDs, data in. Data out to the next LEDs, data in, that sort of thing. Um, And that uh, includes if you're using an LED strip versus individually soldered LEDs. Um, the main difference is LED strips. If there's, um, like say on the 0.2% milk here, there's support for an LED strip right here. Uh, I don't know if you can really see that, but there's three pads here. You got five volt ground and RGB. Um, there are four pads on the LED, but remember, that's like a data line. So if there's nothing to connect it to on the other end, you don't need an out pad for it. So you really only need three. You can absolutely program the microcontroller or the controller once it's on the board. Uh, I do it before I put it on the board to make sure that it works. Because if it doesn't work, I throw it away and put in a different one. Which is a lot easier to do after or before I solder it onto the board than after. Um, it's less of an issue if you are um, socketing your controller, which is the recommended approach. Um, like I always recommend people to solder their control or socket their controllers, but this is very much one of those do what I say, not what I do things. Um, I mostly build keyboards for display purposes. So if the controller dies, if the port rips off or something like that, six months from now, I really don't care that much. I'll be like, yeah, that one doesn't work anymore. Um, it's not like I depend on it for my daily use. Uh, and then, like I said, I use these magnetic tips, which helps with that um, because it doesn't put as much strain on the USB port. Uh, well, I mean, it could just be a bad controller. I have never actually had one not flash before I put it on. Um, but it's just a, you know, <laughs> it's just one of those things. Measure twice, cut once kind of thing, right? Like, I would rather have it fail before I put it on the PCB, before I solder it on, than after. And for the most part... Uh, my guess is that it's either going to work or it's not going to work. It's not going to break later sort of thing. Uh, it, you know, it, it can break later, of course, for lots of reasons. But that's a risk I'm willing to take and have to take anyways, so. Can't find my magnet. Where's my magnetic stick? Too much crap on my desk. Not organized. Well, we're just going to wipe this off the hand. Yeah, it can be less of a nightmare. Because what you do to make it less of a nightmare is you decide... I don't really care if I ruin either of these things and just go at it with some clippers. And then you're just dealing with individual legs, right? But odds are good you're gonna ruin one, either the, the keyboard's PCB or the controller 
or both because you're going to be putting a lot of strain on it because these edge clippers, when they go in, they're not removing material, they're just shifting it, right? So they're going to put a lot of pressure, you know, popping it off there. So long as you're okay with that, cut the damn thing off. What I would do, I would really... I would only do that if I needed to salvage the actual keyboard itself. I would never do that to salvage a controller. I would just buy another controller. Um, assuming they were possible to get, which so far, other than nice nanos for a while, were not possible to get. Um, they uh, have always been possible to get. Um, but if I cared... If I was that concerned about it, I would just socket the controller and that makes the whole thing moot because I can pop the controller out. Okay. I think that's enough uh, baffing about with that. So I've got the controller on, I've got the diodes on. There's firmware on here. I'm going to do the LED for grins. I'm assuming that this little arrow here means that's where the notch goes. And I can kind of confirm that by seeing this line right here is coming off of the negative battery terminal. Or I'm assuming, yeah, the negative battery terminal because there's a little plus there. Um, which means this is ground, and if I'm remembering correctly, that is the ground pin on the LED. So whatever, we're just gonna go for it. If it doesn't work, I can always pull it off and spin it around. All right, who wants to bet if this works or not on the out of the gate? <laughs> I actually don't want to make that bet because I don't know how the default firmware behaves with the LED. Because I know the Kira default firmware, all the LEDs will light up red if the, if they work. But this, I don't know, and I can't just throw the Kira firmware on here because I don't think that's the same pin. For the LED. You do it in the streets. You do it at home. The rest is bullshit and you know it. Yeah, I don't think it's the same pin on the controller. So it won't work. But we're going to plug it in and see if it works anyways. Because if it does work, great. If it doesn't, then also great. Yeah, it didn't do anything. So uh, the default firmware just might have that turned off or something. We'll see. We'll get there. Okay, switch time. So like I said before, we've got Xylent V2s. These are a silent tactile switch uh, from Zeal PC. Um, I used these for a little while. I don't like them um, because they've got just the tiniest little amount of pre-travel. I don't know if that's easy to see. Let me see. So if we look here, there's just the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little bit of pre-travel. And that kind of has a click to it, right? And then it has the tactile bump. And so how this plays out is when you're typing on them, it feels like two clicks. So it feels scratchy. And it's fine. They're fine switches. But when you stack them up next to, say, Holy Pandas or Glorious Pandas or a almost direct... Um, sort of comparison to the um, Gazoo Boba U4s, which are a silent linear or silent tactile as well. They don't have any pre-travel or stem wobble or anything 
they're just that much better. Plus, these are expensive. They're like a dollar twenty-five or something a piece. Uh, and the Bobe E4s are much cheaper than that. Uh, but I have these laying around, and I need to put some switches in, so we'll go with it. And these are PCB mounts, which means they have the extra little pins down here that slot into holes on the PCB. Uh, the alternative being plate mount, which means they really need to go into a plate. And the main difference is alignment. So um, these little feet here hold the switch in the right rotational orientation. Um, and that's, you might think, well, you're soldering them in. Isn't that going to hold them in place? Yes, but this actually lines them up that way. And these plastic pins are much harder to bend than the metal pins on the, the switch legs. And then there's a lot more room in there. Like you can, without PCB mount switches, you can get a lot of rotation out of these before you solder them. So it's better to use PCB mount switches, unless you're using a plate, in which case the plate itself is what holds the alignment uh, or holds the, 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 um, the switch in the right alignment, um, but I'm not using a plate, so. And of course, okay, speaking of that, <laughs> I was saying the reason I, earlier I was saying the reason I didn't want to put the um, diodes on the top is because the caps might hit it. Um, no, because MX switches are meant, they're designed to be used with a plate so the plate would be way higher than those diodes are if I had a plate on this and the, the caps wouldn't hit it. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I could have put the diodes on top and I kind of want it to now, but it's fine. It's too late. They're already on the bottom. I'm not going to pull them off and I'm not going to double them up. So. I do like how these switches fit into these footprints though. Holds them pretty nicely. It's always frustrating when you've got loosey goosey footprints. Because then you gotta be really careful flipping it over. You gotta do a few at a time. It's just so much easier when they can put them all in at once, flip the whole thing over, smash it down to get them all back in the right place. And then then solder away. And if a few pop out in the process, it's fine. It's not all of them. <laughs> These footprints are a mess. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh my. Can't even tell like it's, it's almost like it's meant to, you can have them in two different positions, maybe? Because there's two center holes. Is that intentional? Or is this like a mistake, like you accidentally...
it looks like it's a mistake because if you look at this pin here these two pads don't connect so this one won't do anything that one's connected to or no because this is on the other side yeah fuck, i don't know what's going on here yeah i don't know uh so this might might um require a little bit of after the fact adjustment I have a feeling it's intentional and it's so you can put it in two different positions but it just looks really bizarre because there's so many holes especially like right up to the edge like I know, wait, I want this to be closer. No. There. Uh, oh, and the 125 is in the middle here. Okay. That makes sense. And so these outer switches get optional position to give it a little more space. Oh, man. Kind of hard to line those up well now i want to look to see if i have any cool 1.25 caps in here and i do oh look at the little panda look at the little panda butt come on now I mean, we've got some pandas here, but these are so much better. Okay, okay. We're doing 1.25U home on the thumbs. So that means these need to be in the outer position. Alright, and I'm going to leave these thumbs because they're a little loose. I'm going to solder everything else and then do those. Leave those thumbs for last. And I'm going to leave, take that one off too because it's loose. Okay, cool. So now I flip this over, mash it down good. So that all the switches are in there. I'm going to close this box up because it's sitting precariously on the edge of my desk and open. So if it falls off, it's going to be caps everywhere. All over the floor. Which I'm sure there are plenty of, but those aren't... aren't uh, I don't plan to use those, clearly. So... Solder, solder, solder.
Hello, Daryl. Almost finished with this. So soldering switches on. Then test it, put caps on it, stick it in the box. <laughs> I really need to figure out a storage solution for my keyboard collection. Because what I've got right now is not, uh, not good. Oh, I Sam for a second I thought you were gonna be like, lol, uh you're doing this all wrong. Uh but you missed the diodes, you missed the controller, you missed the LED, and most of the switches. And also, uh, it's not the original ergonomic. Maybe it's the original ergogen. Or is that what you meant to say? 
because uh, I had a Microsoft Natural Keyboard Pro back in 2000. So I think that predates this a little bit. Although now I would say that that's not an ergonomic keyboard. That's just a an Alice wannabe. And Alice, as we know, is not ergo. D Bob. Sam, you've got all kinds of nicknames for people. Earlier you called me Cuck. Which I don't know if I appreciate, but that's okay. Because it's coming from you. Now you're calling Daryl D Bob. Oh. <laughs> so, what? Hey, nice. Yeah, LEDs, um, they're not as daunting, at least, at least these kinds and the, uh, the mini E's, the non E minis can go to hell, but LEDs aren't as daunting as, as, uh, they seem at first. A little bit of practice, they become pretty easy. Yeah, and the underglow ones are last in the chain, so. All right, let's test this thing out. See if it actually works. Mm, well, a few of the keys work. This whole row. These three don't for some reason. Okay. Let's do some science here. Ah. I 
I bet they're just poorly soldered diodes. Sometimes those little round boys are hard to solder. Okay, Keon K configurator. Let's see if I can pull up my screen here. Desk with Safari and iTerm. push off the side of the screen a little bit, but it still has everything I want it to because I just need the alphas, so that's fine. Here we go. Swap this back. All right, so we've got nothing. Flats. Now nothing is working. <laughs> okay. I was like, now everything is going crazy. And it's in large part because I had a little a, a piece of solder out of the spool that was under and shorting everything out. So, okay. Backspace? Nope. Whatever. Okay. So we've got A, S, D. Oh, this must be set up for... This is going to be confusing. This is set up for uh, Colmac or something. Okay, so that key doesn't work. This one isn't working. three aren't working. That one is working. This one uh, might be working. It might not be. I think I think Ron said it wasn't mapped, so I'm going to ignore that for a minute. And this one may be working, may not be, I don't know. We shall test. Oh wait, these might be layer keys. Yeah, I don't know. So, da, 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 ISHT. Okay, so just those keys. Oh, <laughs> helps if they're soldered. The switches are not soldered at all. Like, I just missed that row entirely. Okay. 
Get a little Pepe Fumes action going on here. Come on, come on. Yeah, and I have a feeling these are just layer keys. There was another thumb that wasn't working, right? Like this one? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's really common. That one's still not working. That one's working. That one's working. Those are working. These two, I, I want to say, these are probably just layer keys. So I'll have to figure out what they are. Um, but this one here is not working. So I'm guessing diode. No, I... Friggin' still missed it. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, I'm gonna call this good. Uh, I don't know what's up with the LED. Like I said, it's probably just I need to turn it on, but I don't know what the key mapping is on this board at all. Um... Oh no, I'm not going to call it done. What am I talking about? I'm not even remotely done. We still have to put caps on it. The most important thing. Alright, let's get rid of... Safari window here. And I have to take a picture real quick because I'm 12. Set that for later. Okay. Oh, I see. Transition to there. That's what I wanted. Okay. Okay, so these are NP caps, so they're not sculpted, but they don't come with um, with non-homing F and J keys. So I'm just gonna put them on their QWERTY, tragic QWERTY thing. SDF it's funny, I've been typing Dvorak for 10 years and I couldn't tell you the layout. But I can tell you the QWERTY layout. <laughs> CXCVB. Hello, Choo Choo. So, unregistered, does that mean you have it, it's fully working now? Like, all of your LEDs work? Because that's awesome. 
I'm glad I was able to help. So depending on what time of the week next week the Zaphods arrive, I may have a special midweek stream or two to build those. I plan to build them on Friday because like if they get here Wednesday, I'm just going to build them on Friday. Um, but if they get here like Monday, I don't want to have them sitting around here all week because people want their keyboards. And I don't blame them. So I'll do like midweek streams. Um, but assuming UPS or USPS rather actually gets it to me next week, which is kind of still up in the air because the shipping status says um, in transit arriving on time which is a euphemism for we have no fucking clue where your package is or we know exactly where your package is and it hasn't left but it's gonna arrive on time of course so they won't tell you it hasn't left yet but they'll lie to you and say it's arriving on time which means it's gonna be two weeks late um but anyways uh assuming usps actually gets it here they'll be arriving next week uh, I'm now that I think of it though it's gonna take me probably more than a day or more than one stream to build them all because I, like I said I think I have like six of them although I can build my own off stream if need be or whatever um, that's not a huge rush because I already have one it's not the same as what I'm getting but I already have a Zaphod. It's not like I'm like, oh, new keyboard I've never used before. Uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to stream on Christmas Day. I have plans with a friend, but who knows? I don't know. We'll see. So... Yeah, I think there were six, because there's four official, there's mine, and then there's one that I'm doing for a local person. He wasn't sure what switches he wanted. He didn't want to commit to switches right at the time. He's local. Pete was like, yeah, just work something out with Kitchen, figure it out. So I'm doing his build, but um, it's not through Pete's build service. It's through... Hey, kitchen, can you build this for me? <laughs> Which is totally sanctioned, totally legit. I, I I asked Pete how he wanted to handle it because I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm like side running or, you know, end running around you to, to like get my own business or something. It, it's not about that. It's the guy was not decided on switches. Okay, so I think I want a cry button. This is for... I push this button and that prints out the... Uh, prints out row staggered tears. And then we've got to have a heart eyes... and a button. And definitely an eye roll button for when s'mores calls me cuck. And a, um... Let's go with some bamboo. 
There we go. I think we all need a cry button, even if we don't want one. <clears throat> all right. There is my Absalom. Finally! I have an Absalom. Oh, and it is actually really nice to type on. I'm going to have to figure out firmware for this. As is always the end of my stream, it's like, okay, now I'm going to go off stream and do firmware stuff because it's boring. Most of the time. I, I did, like, when I did my Rev Young 34, I did the firmware stuff on stream, but that was like, I'm defining the shield from scratch and having to literally, like, reverse engineer the board to see what the pinout on the controller is and stuff like that. That was a little bit different. But this is like, I have to figure out some fork of the thing, and I don't know. So, I'll, I'll do that later when it's not, uh... Yeah. I, and I'm glad I went with the bamboos, because I think that yellow works really nicely with the bamboo coloring. Because it's kind of an off-white. I think it looks really nice. This is, uh... Yay! I'm excited. Thank you, Sam, for sending me this board. Thank you, uh... Mr. Zealot, for designing this board and having a... such a cool community of people like I don't know how the Absalom Club server got started other than you're just like let's just you know a bunch of people have them but it's one of the best keyboard communities on the internet I mean there's a bunch of cool people in there you know I don't know this is awesome Anyways, uh, let's see, what, how long have I been going? Two hours. Okay. So I'm going to pop this off here. Like I said, I'll figure out the firmware and stuff for it later. Like get my actual key map ported over to it and stuff like that. Um, but I think I'm going to call it here today because that's all I had planned. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's possible I will do the Absalom Club Turtle. So this keyboard, this PCB came from the Absalom Club meetup in 2021 in Washington, D.C. Uh, that I went to last month. So there's like 10 of these things that exist. And it's just a cool turtle with uh, chalk switches. I think it's chalk spaced and it's got chalk minis down here. Uh, and apparently the idea with these is you use them with your palms, which I think is kind of clever. Um, but the art is from purse, of course. Um, it's just a cool looking board. I think the board was completely done by purse, but the art, the silk is also purse. So it's either that, or maybe my MX Red Boy here. This is the Ospret in red. Oh, and it's an MX spaced and MX switches. But what I really want to do, and this is probably what's going to happen, is I want to build this, the scaffold. Um, it's 
kind of crazy. So, like I said, it's got support for being flat, but also support for having kind of sculpted, dished thing. And it works, or and that's done using these. And the idea is you put these, you know, one one of each of these in these little holes here, solder them in place, and then here's just kind of almost an amoeba-like switch, like individual PCB, and it pops them up. Now, one thing that's a little odd to me is that this is a hot swap board. It's got hot swap sockets, but the tilted switches are not hot swap. And I don't think it's some sort of like the switches tilt into the sockets that are here. And I think it's just that the the risen switches are not hot swap. Um, I see diode pads on the riser or on the, because the, this is the riser on the individual, individual switch plate thing, switch PCBs. There's also diodes here. I don't know if I, which one I need or if I can use either. So I'm going to have to look at the build guide for this, which means I need to find the build guide for it. Um, but I really like weird keyboards that aren't... Yeah, I, I've built a lot of keyboards. Like, they all, you know, nowadays they're all kind of starting to look a lot like this. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, so, uh, like, but if, if I'm going to build one, I, I like having something unique about it. And so this is really unique like i don't you know it's one of two keyboards i know of that has built in like non-flatness using pcb material the other one being the um the fisher which well which i did a stream on before i don't have one i don't have mine readily available um So I've got two people. See, see, you, uh, Mr. Zealot. Thanks again um, for the for the color and for the keyboard. Um, so I've got two people who want the scaffold. So tomorrow, and if I don't finish it tomorrow Sunday, uh, I'll do the scaffold. Um, but yeah, this just it's just so unique. Like never seen anything like this before. Um, and it should be very cool. Should be a fun build. Um, it's gonna take a while because it's complex, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's complex with the the riser things. Otherwise, it's just a standard split board. There's you know TRS jack. I'm guessing that's a reset button. Uh, you've got uh, resistors for the OLEDs. Uh, I'm not going to put OLEDs on there, so I don't need the resistors. Because um, to me, the OLEDs, like, to me, I don't really know what to do with OLEDs, period. Um, and also, the OLEDs aren't the interesting part of the board, so I'm not going to put the OLEDs on. And also, I really, because I don't have the OLEDs to put on them. Um, but yeah, we'll go with the scaffold tomorrow, Sunday. Yeah, uh, what time do I plan? Um, so normally, I try to stream 11 to 2, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, I might change that to noon to three. Um, couple reasons. One, uh, Friday right before, like t Friday at 10 o'clock, I have therapy. Uh, sometimes I need a little bit of time after that to kind of unwind. Uh, that was less of a thing today. Um, more of a, my original plan was to build the the alu bendy, but um, as I was writing up the YouTube description and all that stuff, I was like, wait a minute, I should see if this actually works at all. <laughs> and it doesn't. <laughs> so I'm like, well, okay, throw that all out. So by the time I switched gears, it was past 11. So I just said, screw it, 12. Uh, Sundays, generally, not this Sunday, because my friends who I usually do this with are out of town. Sunday, I have brunch with friends, uh, and we meet at 10. So oftentimes 
you know, because we're waiting for in line at a restaurant or something like that. Um, you know, we're not done until 1130 or something. So it's kind of like Sunday is like noonish. But I think if I just go official noon to three on Pacific on on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so short answer to your question. Tomorrow noon scaffold, Sunday noon scaffold. Um, and I think I'm just going to switch to that from from here on out. Uh, also then like I've been my sleep schedule's been really messed up lately. So oh, I've been sleeping a lot later uh, in the morning so it gives me more time to just wake up. So anyways. Ah. <sighs> this is exciting. Uh both of the getting the Absalom finally. It's just such a I don't know. I mean it's like I said, they all kind of look like this nowadays, the boards that I build. <laughs> like, there's nothing unique about it on that front, just more of like, it has a lot of sentimental value to me because of the server and because of the, the community and the friends I've made there and stuff like that. Like, having this is just awesome. Plus, it's a great board. I mean, it's in its own right, you know? Um, this is exciting because this is so unique. Uh, anyways, I'm going to call it now and uh, see you tomorrow. Noon Pacific time, building a scaffold. Ha, 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 ha.